Is Mexico all drug cartels and fancy beach resorts? We don't think so. Come with us as we travel by RV with 12 other couples on an epic three-month adventure to explore the culture, history, and food of our neighbor to the south. Well, this week we're off to Via Corona. Unfortunately, some gastrointestinal issues kept us from doing any of the excursions. Uh, we'll give you a campground review, and then we're off to our favorite place, Boca de Iguanas. Good morning, and Rhonda wants to talk too. Good morning. <laughs> Never forget to get your dog water first thing in the morning. <laughs> your dog Why? water? Because it's going to be a long drive day. <laughs> yes. Hey, we're getting ready to leave uh, this campground. Of course, I wanted to give you another campground review. We're at uh, Chimico Water Park, and we're outside of Guadalajara. A uh, little tiny town. Uh, we've walked into it a couple times. It's a sm uh, small square, some tiny grocery stores, and uh, they like to party. Five o'clock this morning because it's the first day of spring. Gunshots, fireworks, marching bands, church bells. Yep, 5 a.m. And that will keep on going, I think, all weekend. Uh, anyway, this is um, one of the campgrounds we've actually had the most space at. Uh, we were very well spread out. We could pretty much pick our own site. Uh, the electric um, was a little funky at work though, but I did have to run our electric over to another site. So I had like three extension cords uh, to do that. Uh, water was good. There are bathrooms and showers here. Uh, not the best and not the worst, but they are here. Uh, the main attraction here is the, the thermal pools and uh, the water park is absolutely huge and when you use the campground here uh, you can actually use the water park too and they pretty much drain the pools each night and when we've walked around the pools they've only had like one one operational each day and uh, lots of kids it's a huge area um, depending on what time of day there can be a lot of kids or just a, a few of them and more bathrooms over here more bathrooms on the other side and uh, so it was definitely, um, you know, our AC worked here, which was kind of nice. Not all RV parks are have enough juice to run your AC units. Nice park, uh, can use a little bit of maintenance. I did talk to some folks from British Columbia that had uh, been here in the past, and they had, they're saying the whole winter in another town, they rented a car to come check it out because they, they've been here uh, quite a while ago. And they said, yeah, it's a little bit, can use some maintenance when they were here four or five years ago, it was a lot nicer, but Good enough for me, I liked it. All right, so they actually have these private pools too that you can rent. Uh, so they're thermal, they dump them out, fill them up every day. It looks like somebody had a party in here last night. There's tons of beer cans. Uh, there's a lounge chair and it looks like a shower, cold water only, and a toilet. Uh, a little rough around the edges, but somebody had a good time here last night. Yeah, remember those celebrations I was telling you about? All right, uh, I would say the, the biggest con of this particular spot is the air quality. Uh, it can be almost choking at times, like right now. <laughs> um, the other night I had to get up in the middle of the night and actually turn our max fan off and close it. It got so smoky inside the trailer and you see kind of ash laying around all over the place. Uh, even now, it's just I've been coughing a little bit more in this spot. So I don't know what they're burning out here uh, in the fields, but it's, it's, uh, it can be pretty bad. Uh, they did have Wi-Fi here and it worked really, really well. I actually uploaded a video, yay. <laughs> and, uh, then it went out and they had a different one. So they were pretty much on any problems right away. So fast response. And it's about an hour from Guadalajara close to tequila and some other ruins. So pretty cool spot to do stuff.
yum, we think. Nothing Dang. like a beach birthday on a beautiful day. Out, Check this out. So it's Lisa's birthday and we're having a pancake yeah. breakfast. Should have done this more often. This totally rocks. Burger con carne. Burger con carne. <laughs> she doesn't know what she's saying. <laughs> you do. What's it's, con carne? Well, carne is beef. And you can get a burger con pollo, which is a chicken burger. Or you can get... And then I think there's actually a fish burger, which I opted not to get. And here I am having coconut shrimp. It's yummy. So this restaurant... In La Manzanilla on the beach we found the other day, uh, Felisa and Greg and James and we loved it. We had really great breakfast here and of course margaritas on the beach. Um, this area is quickly becoming one of my favorites on this trip and we'll tell you more in a few minutes as to why. Look at this view. in a big fog bank. Why is your hair wet? <laughs> uh, because of stamping here. It's, it's a fog. This is like Pacific Northwest. I mean, it was literally like 85 degrees earlier today. And now it's, it's still warm. 60 and it's 65 humid. or yeah, so. It's, uh, and beautiful. Quite and I'm taking my sandals off to walk the rest of the way in the water. That's more fun. We are walking around Malaki, which is just down the road from where we're staying. And we have our puppies with us, and we found an awesome coffee shop with, can you believe it, chocolate croissants. Uh, all right, we're staying in Boca do Guanas. We want to do a little exploring here. Uh, Malaki looks like a, probably a pretty big expat uh, place, and also there's a, quite a bit of tour buses here. So coffee and then the beach go check out this really cool spot our impressions of Malake it's gorgeous here and but it's very very expat so there's a lot of Americans and Canadians here a beach lot is, the beach is a lot steeper than yeah and uh, yeah, it's nice, but I actually like Boca do Iguanas better because it's just like, I don't know, it's camping. It's not full of all these resorts and the beach is actually even a little nicer. And I know, I'm into the sun, so we're all dark, but it is beautiful here, I gotta say. Uh, the rock formations are really, really nice. Nice too, aren't they? Yes, they are. But we've noticed even though a lot of the workers are expats, so that's kind of interesting. It's really the first time we've seen a, a community with expats living and working here but it's it's definitely a resort place not totally our speed but it's pretty this is a place i'm gonna hate to leave uh, we are at boca de iguanas uh, rv park and we managed to get uh, after a very very busy busy three-day weekend we moved after two nights we we're here for uh, four total and we got two nights right on the beach so the closest town is La Manzanilla which is down the beach this way a uh, really small town it takes about oh it's about two and a half mile walk to get there and the beach kind of ends that way behind me and there's some food vendors and stuff Ah, okay, what did I like the most? <laughs> I hate to leave, and what do I like the most? Uh, the town is really small. This is not a resorty area at all. There's no big, huge hotels or some, you know, some smaller boutique hotels. It's not super crowded. Uh, the town itself, there's there's definitely some expats that live there. Met a, a couple 
people from the Yukon <laughs> the other day, so Yukon Connie, awesome. Uh, this place is amazing though, and a place I think we could definitely come back and spend a lot more time at. Uh, the beach or the, the normal camping prices are about 500 pesos. Uh, that is with electricity. I think it was 400 or 450 without. And then if you get the beach front uh, with the palapa, that's an additional 280 uh, pesos a night. Uh, we've walked down the beach a few times. It feels like you got your own private stretch of beach. There's hardly anybody else on the beach when we're there. A few people here and there, but this is not a crowded stretch when you're when you're walking down that way. Uh, because of the three-day weekend, it was this campground was packed, and the beach was packed, and the restaurants were packed. And then after the weekend, it's just like, where'd everybody go? Everybody completely cleared out of here. All right, the electricity here was really good. No faults at all. No open grounds or reverse grounds. Water was good. Uh, the bathrooms, not the best, not the worst. There is warm water, not hot water for showers, but close enough. And uh, cell service, meh. <laughs> cell service was not that great here, but that's okay. Sometimes you need that as well. So this was a really nice break for us from all the, the travel and the touring and uh, all of that. And now we are headed north, so we'll see you down the road in Lota Marcus, north of Puerto Vallarta. Okay, so I was swimming down in the ocean and the wave came in and it turned me over, tossed me over, over. And a shark came, bit my hand. I punched it twice with my left hand, right? The shark swam around, swam away. He looked over me like this and swam. And I looked at him like this and said, come back. And, and over here, over this guy over here said, Cheers, Ralph! I saw it all with my own two eyes! Now, Lori, the wife, how does this stack up? <laughs> About 1%. But I, I wasn't there to witness, so I, I'm only going by history. That's all I can say. Anything but bad? <laughs> I lost my, my right shoe yeah. wrestling with the shark. I lost it. Somewhere in the ocean. It, it is was out a there. sacrifice, a virgin sacrifice. I am part of the Mayan <laughs> gods now. The temple of the sun and the temple of the moons are bowing down to me. Tonight, we shall have a party and a feast. That's good. You are now on YouTube. That's it.